now that uh, we've gotten past the basics, let's take a look at the opening because um, this is how we're going to get started. And um, I'll take you through the basic principles of the opening. There are a few rules you should follow. The first one is the most important one. Occupy the center with your pawns. So let's take a move like this. Black plays e5. It's a very typical opening. It's called the king's pawn opening. I mean, with a lot of sub variations, depending on what white does and black does. There are many different names. But essentially, both sides have moved their king pawns uh, two squares forward. What have they done? Well, white has occupied that square with that pawn physically. Black has occupied that square. But on top of occupying these squares, this pawn now controls that square. So it has some influence there. And that pawn controls that square. They also control an additional square on the side. And black controls a square on the side. So um, what white has done is to play e4. Now suppose black had played that move. Well, that's a, a really bad move because then what white would do is to bring his second pawn forward. And what he has done is to gain a lot of time in the center. Now black will always be one move behind when he fights for the center. Um, for instance, now let's say black repents and goes for this to try to play um, this pawn over here. Then white could bring his f pawn forward or he could bring his knight forward. And now black is always a move behind when fighting for the central squares. But you can play even worse and continue like this. And then white's what we call lead in development is becoming so big that black will all, never be able to fight for the center again. He will always be so far behind that um, white will dominate the center in this game. Whereas that's a very healthy move. And when we get to the openings, we'll see a lot of different openings, so you get an idea of the various strategies. But that's a terrible move to make in the absolute beginning of the game. It's almost never uh, a good move. So e5, knight f3. Now um, let's take um, another example. What is white doing here? Well, it's important to develop your minor pieces next. So these are the pieces you should bring out after occupying the center with your pawns. But this rule can be connected to another rule, which is to exert pressure on the center. So not only is it important to bring out your knight, it's important to bring out your knight to a square where it exerts pressure on the center. Let's take a black example like that. Well, that's a terrible move because what, what white is going to do is uh, he can just develop his piece. And again, white is always one move ahead uh, where he's fighting for the uh, center. So white is always one move ahead and black uh, will not be able to recover that. So white could now go here and uh, black is finding it hard to fight for the center, but also white could take this pawn and suddenly uh, the bishop and knight are coordinating against this. So black could be forced to respond by defending his central pawn, but then white develops another piece. Uh, and if black plays uh, a move like this, already you can see that white's ready for action. Because white started early and because black misplaced his pieces, white is bringing everything out very fast. So that's a terrible move. That's another terrible move. Um, it's important to develop your minor pieces and it's important to keep an eye out on the center. So you should be exerting pressure on the center. So here there are many good moves. That's a good move because black is counterattacking. Um, so white is attacking uh, the pawn I've indicated in red and black's attacking the pawn I've indicated in green. That's a good move as well because uh, both sides are fighting for the same square, which I've indicated in green. Now let's take an example of uh, bishop b5. 
Well, this is the Rai Lopus, and the idea is because the black knight is defending the pawn, white tries to weaken it a little bit, place it under threat. Um, the concept being that you're undermining the e5 pawn for, for the black side. So white is following the rules. Um, brought out a minor piece here, a minor piece here, and um, now let's take a move like that. That is a bad move because you're moving the same piece twice. So um, we can add one more rule. Occupy the center with your pawns. Develop your minor pieces to exert pressure on the center. Do not move a piece more than once. This move is particularly bad because not only does it move the knight away from the center, it moves it twice. And uh, so you'll find that as white uh, develops already now black has to do something about this pawn so typically he will go here white can come back black will go here and white's generally much better placed to fight for the center let's take a move like this and something like this now if black were to make a move like that, for instance. What's wrong with that? It's the same we saw on the other side. Do not move the same piece twice. What will happen here is that white is actually ready to capture this pawn. And now the queen is threatening the knight. So black will have to move the knight back. And black is losing time with every move. So a better move would be to keep fighting for the center. You could uh, put the bishop there or you could put the pawn there. They're all valid responses, which um, keep black's game humming along. Let's try some other opening. Let's go bishop c4, which is perfectly valid, knight c6. I covered this uh, idea in uh, the mate section, but I'll cover it again. Queen f3. Well, this is slightly hope-based. White is trying to attack that pawn. And what happens is that uh, because there are two pieces attacking a weak square, white is trying to give checkmate on the very next move. That's okay if it works. If your opponent falls into it, it's fine. But what if your opponent doesn't fall into it? What if your opponent knows that trick and avoids this? Well, you'll find that this queen is very awkwardly placed here. So what happens is that um, this square belongs to the knight, but the queen is occupying it. So if white went out to play d3, black could play knight d4, attacking the queen and attacking the pawn. The only way to defend it is to come back. And then black could play something like b5. White is forced to go bishop b3. Black develops his pieces. And we see that black has just gained time and white has lost two moves. Remember, he went to f3. And then he came back. So he lost two moves for nothing. The same logic applies if you go here. Because as long as black is aware of this threat, he will move his pawn and block it. If white persists, let's say here, then black develops the knight, again stopping queen takes f7. And then white is simply behind in development. If he goes d3, same logic as before. Knight d4 and the queen is kicked back again to d1 and black is gaining time. So to sum up, occupy the center with your pawns. This is an example. This is an example for black, occupying the center with the pawns. That would be a mistake because you're not fighting for the center, so white is gaining time and white is beginning to occupy the center. Develop your minor pieces, exerting pressure on the center. That's a good move. That's a good move. But that's a terrible move because it is not fighting for the center.
and that as well. So you should be developing your minor pieces to exert pressure on the center or to fight for central squares. Here, white is continuing the developing his pieces. The piece is indirectly exerting pressure on the center and black can do this. That's a terrible move because you're moving the same piece twice. You should not move the same piece twice unless um, all the other pieces have already come out. So you should develop all your minor pieces if possible before proceeding further with the same piece because you don't want to give your opponent uh, an advantage in the number of pieces he has brought out. Another example would be this, d3, white is defending the pawn that black attacked. And now that's a terrible move because again white, uh, black is developing, moving the same piece twice without bringing out all his other pieces. And white would just win a pawn and attack the knight. So it would be much better to play something like that, which is fighting for central squares. And uh, or you could even go d6, which is defending a central square of yours. That's a bad move because you're not fighting for the center. I gave you an example, which would be bishop c4, knight f6, and now both knight e5 or knight c3 look very nice for white. And it's very important, do not bring your queen out early. Your queen should come generally after the minor pieces. Um, all the rules I'm giving you that are exceptions which you really have to understand before you could use them but a simple rule of thumb don't bring your queen out too early and uh, as we've seen here after this move watch out for your opponent's threats this is a perfectly good move to fight for the center but it misses the point which is that queen f7 is made so you have to watch out for your opponent's threats if there's a concrete threat that has to be dealt with first. That deals with that move. That does not. The same thing here. After queen h5, there's no use saying that knight f6 develops my piece. It's a wonderful move if it were not for the fact that white is threatening checkmate. So you have to play this first. And having addressed the threat, you can bring out your knight. To sum it up again. Occupy the center with your pawns, develop your minor pieces, exerting pressure on the center. Don't move a piece more than once. Don't develop your queen too early and beware of your opponent's threats. Finally, one rule which doesn't really fight for the center, in fact, seems to slightly contradict it, but we will see the logic behind it. So knight f6, d3, if black played for instance d6, then white could castle. And you may ask, well, how does that fight for the center? It doesn't. The king is the big exception because it is the one piece that needs to be shielded. It needs to be protected. Um, when the king is in the center, the other pieces can't occupy the center easily because the king is in the way. And second, the king is vulnerable and therefore you cannot open the center too much because that would expose the king to a lot of threats. So castling is a very important move that you should... Uh, get in as soon as possible. When you have a chance, just tuck your king away and uh, that will mean that all the other pieces are much freer to fight for the center and fight for the initiative and don't have to defend the king. These seven rules should help you get started. You don't have to strictly adhere to them and as you will see, we will show you openings where the principles are applied in varying degrees. Your opponent will also try to thwart your plans. So your opponent is constantly going to be fighting for the center as well. And so the strategy has to evolve taking that into account. But if you grasp, grasp these principles and keep these rules in mind, it's hard for you to go horribly wrong. And that's nice because um, if you're just starting out, the worst thing is to lose some game that you could have easily avoided just by knowing these rules. So by knowing these rules, you'll have a lot of fun against an unprepared opponent You'll get some nice easy points and you won't give away any of your own. I hope uh, you have a lot of fun starting out in chess. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. 
If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.